through 42. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly will we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Well, good evening. It is good to be here again. It's good to see everyone out here. You know, uh, I wanted to mention one more announcement for the prayer list that, you know, you would think since I was the one that did the announcements, it would have been said. But uh, one of uh, Erica's friends, uh, Tori, who some of you have seen, she's come here with her a few times. Uh, her grandmother had a stroke and is having some memory problems right now. So I wanted to mention her um, so that we could pray for her as well. <clears throat> now, uh, also, another thing this evening, you know, uh, Caleb wanted a friend to come with him today, so I, he asked me how long my sermons usually are, so I, I told him only about 25 minutes, so in about four hours when I'm done, he's probably going to be shocked, but I didn't mean to lie, so, uh, but, <laughs> you know, the, the thief on the cross is uh, one of those topics that often comes up when people are talking about salvation. You know, um, I, I did a, a small seminar that they, the YSU study group puts together. They, they try to do a seminar once a year, and I did that a, a few years back now, and it was, my topic was on baptism. And you know, the whole idea is to try to get people from the community to come and, and hear a message from the Lord, but also we open up the floor for some questions and you know this was one of those questions that came up after the lesson after all the scriptures that we went through and all the uh the word of god that pointed to the idea of you know becoming a christian is you know once you believe and you hear and you repent and confess you you make that step of being baptized to have your sins washed away you know i'm sure that i'm not alone in in being um, someone that someone has brought that topic up when you were talking with someone about salvation. And, and I think, you know, unfortunately, it's a small little section that if we would just take a step back and look at the Bible the way we should, rightly divided as, as the Word of God has told us. You know, but one of the things that I, I really didn't add to this lesson here, but I wanted to just throw in the introduction was the idea that, you know, some will say that the thief on the cross was never, was never baptized and he was saved. Well, find in the Bible where it tells you he was never baptized. Because really what they're doing is going out on a limb and saying, well, it's just this one moment and we're saying. So to me, that's not even an argument because I couldn't prove to you that he was. But I do know that John the Baptist was baptizing individuals before the cross. And I do know that the Bible tells us that Jesus' own disciples were even baptizing more than John was. And, and when you look at the story of the thief on the cross, one of the things you see some changes that happen uh, while he's on the cross. And if you take all of the, the Gospels together and look at the accounts, you know, one of the things is you see that the thief both thieves on the cross are rebuking and ridiculing Jesus at first. It's later on in the message, and Luke is really the only one that, that touches on this, where the, the one thief actually says, wait a minute, and, and, and repeats really the, the passages that um, Bob read for us, in that idea that he says, you know, don't you know God? And you know, there's a number of things that could have happened there, because even though, uh, you know, it's not necessarily saying that he had heard a whole lot about Jesus before, but it's a good chance. He was there uh, in the same areas where Jesus was preaching the gospel. But we do see the Bible even alluding to some of the soldiers looking at the things that were happening during the cross, the blacking out of the sky, the earthquakes, and, and things such as that, and, and saying, wait a minute, you know, this, this is God's son. 
But that's just one thing I wanted to add before we really got into the lesson is, is the idea that if someone tells you he wasn't baptized, ask them where it says that because I can't prove that he was or wasn't. But to me, that's not where we need to even look in the first place. We need to understand the time frame and, and the things such as that. All right. We, there we go. I think, yeah, Got one more here, maybe. Yeah, okay, I'm on. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Technology, you know, it only works when you want it to, right? I mean, when you don't want it to. Well, you know, uh, a person that lives and dies according to the, the laws that they are under. Uh, you know, when we die here in America today, no one can say, well, you know, you're under the role of the British crown. Because in 1776, our country won the revolution and the constitution that was signed enacted the laws of this land. You know, a law, that, uh, a law not yet in effect has no power. It's only logic that a, a law not in effect is not the one that we must submit to. The old law was still in effect at the time of the cross. The old law was still what Jesus was under. The Old Testament is what Jesus uh, lived perfectly, what no other person, no Jew had done before that lived perfectly under that law so that he could be our Savior. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, we see that you know, he kept the law and fulfilled it. He, he did that throughout his entire earthly ministry. The New Testament law was, was something that was on its way, the processes of the, the cross and the, the death and burial and the resurrection of Jesus had to take place in order for that testament to be in effect. Um, you know, it's, it's something that we, I, I think, understand. You know, a, a will or a testament that is made needs someone to die before it comes into effect. You know, the... The New Testament law, as we see, was, was not in effect when the thief was on the cross. The promise to the thief that was made while both were still under the old law. And we, we also need to remember that Jesus, being the Son of God, was the only person that ever, ever lived on this earth that could look at you and say, you're forgiven of your sins. Um, he didn't use those exact words here in this particular case, but there were many times through his ministry, he, he would tell individuals that they're forgiven, but he would add something to that. He would said, then go on and sin no more. Now here in this case, you know, he, he, he looks at the thief and the thief tells him, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And, and, and further on, the, the next verse in that goes along and Jesus says, tonight you will be with me in paradise. So we need to understand the time frame and, and the, the moments that the cross represent. And some of the things that we want to look at here as well is um, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 of the Great Commission. It was given by Christ and it included baptism, but that wasn't it given until after his resurrection. Christ would not speak the words, as another uh, of the gospel writers, Mark 16, referring to the, uh, the Great Commission, until 43 days after the statement that the thief made upon the cross. And in, it wasn't until 50 days later, after the cross, before Peter stood upon Mount, on, the, on Pentecost, in front of the, the multitude and, and gave them the answer when they said, what shall we do? And that we find in Acts chapter 2, verses 38. Um, you know, they, they needed to be baptized. What does that passage tell us? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. Forgiveness, that your sins would be taken away, that, uh, that we would be forgiven. You know, the statement on the cross was made years before, probably somewhere around uh, three or four years before Saul told, was told to wash away his sins in Acts 22 and verse 16. You know, another interesting thing about the passage there of Saul, 
is if you, you look at the events that are happening with Saul. You know, here the thief was on the cross, and, and, and many will point to that and say, well, basically he's saying he believes in Jesus, and, and that's all you need to do. That's all you need to say is, I believe in Jesus. Well, the Bible clearly tells us that's not enough. And when, when Saul went away from the light, you remember one of the questions he asked on the road of Damascus, he said, who are you, Lord? And, and it was plainly answered to him that it was Jesus. So, so Saul then at that point believed that Jesus was wrong. Well, we're glad he was crucified, but that there was a, a wronging in, in his thinking of persecuting the church and going after uh, the members of the body of Christ. But another thing that I want to add to that is Saul sat and prayed and fasted for three days. And it wasn't until Ananias came and spoke with him. It wasn't until Ananias came, what did he say to him? He said, arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. So once again, it's the time frame that we're looking at. It's the different events that are taking place. Now, the thief died before Christ ever said, he who believes and is baptized. It was about eight years before Cornelius and his household were baptized in Acts chapter 10 and verse 48. It was about 30 years before Peter would write that baptism now saves in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 21. So we are, are looking at the events and the time and, and we need to have an understanding of, of what those events are. What, what it, when is it taking place? Uh, you know, as far as making a, a sacrifice, you know, that was something that was done in the Old Testament. We're not commanded to do that today either. So we also need to remember when we're talking about the thief on the cross, the fact that the church was not in existence when the thief was on the cross. Now, even the statement that the thief made to Jesus, I don't know if he understood it this way, but the Bible portrays it to us this way. He says, when you enter into your kingdom. Now, I, I know the thief was thinking of heaven, was thinking of, of leaving this world, but really, um, God's kingdom is in heaven, but the church is also referred to as the kingdom of God. Now, since the establishment of the church, it has been God who placed every member into the church, Acts chapter 2 and verse 47. You know, and, and with that being said, I, I want to add another thing to that. You know, there's no one that can tell you you're saved unless they're holding the Bible in front of you and they're showing black and white what God has said. Because God gives us the, the ways of, uh, of obtaining the salvation. He tells us how that is, the steps that we need to take. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 and 22 through 23, we see the, that every spiritual blessing is in the body of Christ, the church. So it's obvious to me that the Bible also tells us that the blood of Christ flowed backwards and forwards. So, you know, those that, that lived in the patriarchal age would have been covered as long as they were being obedient to God. Those that were in the Mosaic age, if they were being obedient to God, the blood of Christ would cover that. But they were under different restrictions. There, there was no command in, 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 um, in Judaism to be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Now, don't get me wrong. They did have cleansing rituals. I mean, you can go and, and look at historical sites in Jerusalem and around Israel, and you'll see these, in some places, elaborate pools that individuals would walk down a set of steps and, and go into the, the water and come back up. But there were different rituals that they do, but it wasn't for the forgiveness of sins. We also need to realize that since salvation is a spiritual blessing, then one must be part of the church to be, that 
one, there, to get my words out here. One must be a part of the church in order to be saved. So we, we look at, at this understanding in Acts chapter 2, verse 47, who adds individuals to the church? It's God. The only way we can become a member of the church is to follow what God has to say. And that's where the salvation comes from. So how does one get into the church where these spiritual blessings reside? Take a look at Galatians chapter 3, uh, verses 26 through 27. And I got that on the next slide here. It says, For you are all sons of God through the faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as you that were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So we, we see that, that, that symbolism of baptism and, and what that means. And, you know, you can even go back to the ideas of, of what John the Baptist was doing. You know, he was ushering, ushering in the Messiah to come. And, and Jesus himself even said in John chapter 3, verse 3, when he was talking to Nicodemus, that one, in order to be saved, must be saved from the, the water and the Spirit. So we see the door to the church is baptism. But with that being said, remember, we have the whole Bible to look at. We have the, the whole New Testament, especially that we are under. The, um, we need to look at the fact that, you know, if one goes up and says, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get baptized, but they don't have belief, that, that doesn't work. I'm not taking away from the idea that we don't need to confess Jesus, because we do. I'm not taking away from the fact that we need to repent of the sins that we have, because the Bible tells us that. I'm not saying that, you know, that we are not to, as I said, believe, because those things are all there too. But we need to take it in as a whole and, and see what God wants us to do. In Romans chapter 6, verse 3, or do you not know that as many of us that were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 13, For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jew or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. It, it frustrates me sometimes as a preacher when I can't get people to understand this. Because it's not that I'm sitting here thinking, well, I'm smarter than all them, they should just listen to me. No, I'm thinking the Bible is smarter than all of us. And, and it says it in black and white. It, it, it's right there in many cases. And, you know, the beginning of the church, we call that Acts chapter 2, that first gospel ser sermon that was preached. What was in that message? The answer to what shall we do? So the thief lived before the church was in existence, and therefore he has an exception since the church was not yet in existence. We also look at Christ could use his power as he chose during his lifetime. And I, I alluded to that a little bit as well. It was one of the other questions that came up when I was um, teaching that little seminar. And, and someone began to ask the question about that and we brought up the fact that he, he did. He forgave people while he was on the earth. He told them they were forgiven. But, you know, we look at those instances and we see, go on and sin no more in many of those cases. Uh, but during the life of Christ on, his, on the earth, he had the ability and the authority to do certain things. One included the forgiveness of sins in Matthew 9 and verse 6. For that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. And you know what? If Jesus was physically standing here in front of me today and said, and I wasn't baptized and said, do you believe? If you tell me you believe, I'm going to forgive you of your sins and you can go to heaven. Jesus could look at me and do that. But since he's physically not here, we have to rely on his word, the Bible, and the message that he taught and the message that his apostles therefore also taught. While on the earth, Christ dispensed blessings as 
was his will or as he saw fit. Christ makes this possible in the parable of the vineyard in Matthew chapter 20 and verse 15. You know, he says, is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is your eye evil because I am God? One of the things that we need to realize is that in order to be a follower of Christ, the only way that we can do that is to follow him. We can't look upon it and say, well, but I feel as if I'm saved. You know, I've talked about feelings many times and talked about the idea of being baptized and how that was a wonderful day. That there were some wonderful feelings that day when I knew that I was accepting Jesus, when I was baptized. But you know, it was also backed up with the fact that the Bible told me that's what I needed to do. But I also live, and you also live, and all those around us today and tomorrow and for the past 2,000 years have lived at a different time. And that was a time after the cross. That was a time after the establishment of his church. While Christ was on the earth, he had the ability and the authority to forgive sins, perform miracles, bestow his blessings as he saw fit, one of which was pardoning one of the thieves on the cross and granting entrance into paradise. So we, we see this Jesus working in a wonderful way as he still works today. He, he works in this same way, forgiving sins and, and, and is going to stand before God be, on our own behalf as our advocate on judgment. And he's going to point out those of us that are his. And the only way that we're going to be a part of that is if we are following our commands that are to us today. You know, many times in the New Testament, it is very clear that Christ knew the hearts and the minds of men. You know, knowing the mind or the thoughts, you know, a couple passages, Matthew 9, verse 4, this is abbreviated here, but Jesus knowing their thoughts, it says. Luke 11, verse 17, but he knowing their thoughts. So it, it's, it's fitting that he knew the heart and the mind of the thief and saw fit to pardon him and grant him entrance into paradise. But you know what? There was also another very good chance. I mean, we only know that he was a thief. We, only, we don't know his nationality. We don't know anything. But the region that they were in, there was a very good chance that he was already a Jew. That had already been, you know, obviously became a thief and he wasn't following what God wanted. But even in the Old Testament, one could repent of their sins could make a sacrifice. We also see that he is the living and the righteous judge. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. You know, uh, Paul said this. He said, Finally there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Just to point out one more, just to remember, you know, Paul also was baptized. I was referring to Saul earlier, and, and those of us that know our Bibles know that Saul, the man on Damascus that was blinded by the light, his name was changed to Paul. And he was commanded to arise and be baptized for the forgiveness of his, of his sins. So as I bring the lesson to a close, and I don't know why I didn't have a conclusion screen up here, but you know what, I'll just put that back up there since it looks pretty. And we'll uh, conclude the lesson by looking at some of the things we talked about. You know, first of all, the main thing that I believe we need to, to look at is the scriptures. The scriptures tell us to rightly divide the word of God. It's very clear in the scriptures that there were actually three different periods of time that took place in the Bible. That first one being the patriarchal age, and that was from, from Adam and Eve all the way up to Moses. The second being the Mosaic, and, and the Mosaic was uh, from all the way from Moses 
all the way up until Jesus is, uh, came to the earth, died upon the cross, was resurrected. And that new covenant, that new covenant that could actually forgive sins was put into place. You know, we preach on different things such as this. Someone had mentioned this topic in Sunday morning Bible class, probably because they've had people talk to them about the same thing. What we need to realize is we need to make sure that we're safe. And if God tells us, you know, I mean, his apostles, you know, Peter says we have a the, the baptism that, we now, that now saves us. We see numerous times, you know, we talked to Acts 22, verse 16 with Paul. We uh, talked to Acts chapter 2, verse 38, the very beginning of the church. And, and they said, what, are, what should we do? We crucified Jesus. And you know, there's also another very important thing that we need to understand in the church is the Bible, when it talks about baptism, it talks about the step that God is commanding us to take for the forgiveness of sins. And, and there's no entrance into heaven for someone that has not their sins forgiven. And you know, we don't preach that because we want to make someone feel bad if they're on the other side of that. We preach that because we want them to know, we want everyone to know that it's God's message that it's important. It's not my feelings. It's not what my best friend says. It's not what my mom and dad have told me about religion. It's what God says. And I hope this is a message that, that opens up your mind because I'm sure you might run into this in the future. Someone will say, if you want to be saved by Jesus, all you have to do is say this little prayer. And to me, there's not one person in the church that's written about in the Bible that I see that was saved that ever just sat down and said a prayer because I sure would think that Saul probably would have fit that description because the prayer that I've heard people say you have to say does not last three days. And Paul was on his knees praying and fasting. We want all to go to heaven and the entrance is only going to be given by God. God is the one that adds individuals to the church. It's not preachers. It's not elders. It's not anyone else but God. So tonight, as we bring the lesson to a close, we offer the invitation. We offer the invitation to all those that are here that if you do not have salvation today, you know what, I, I want you to know it's free of charge. It's not something you have to save up for. It's not something that you have to plead or beg for. It's something that God is willing to give. And if you believe in God and you believe in Jesus Christ, the next step is to follow his word and become obedient. If you're here and you're already a Christian, maybe you've been struggling with some things. We talked about proper repentance this morning and how sometimes that's hard because when we repent what do we do we admit we're wrong now i would hope it, it's a lot easier to turn to god who's perfect and say i was wrong rather than sometimes when we talk to ourselves because we know we're not perfect either but if you're here and you're not right with god i pray and i hope that you make the choices in your life to do so before that judgment day comes and if you're here this evening, please come forward as we stand and sing this song.